coming by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The message today is entitled, Just to Know He Cares. I'm talking about Jesus. Just to Know He Cares. There used to be a song back in my younger days when I played the accordion. That was one of the first songs, one of the first songs I learned was a song entitled, Just to Know He Cares. Gives me peace beyond compare. I am not discouraged with this heavy load I bear, just to know my Savior cares. And the verse went often tossed and driven as toward heaven's shore I say, when so often or boisterous try my prayers. But this consolation triumphs over the roughest gale, just to know my Savior cares. You know, I think that's the easiest thing for Christians to forget in time of stress and battle and temptation, heartache, troubles of different kind, loss and so forth. I believe it's that one consolation the devil steals away from. We forget that Jesus is there and he cares for us. Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm going to read you a scripture in 1 Peter 5, in verse 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Exalt you and pick you up from the mess you're in in due time. <laughs> Praise God. Why? Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, I didn't say that. The Bible, the Holy Scriptures, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, that knew him as intimately as anybody did. The Apostle Peter said that by the Holy Ghost. And you know, it's in the old book. Back in my days, they used to, their terminology was, I got it out of the good book. <laughs> I used to like that, and I still do. You'd hear people talking about it, said, that come out of the good book. Quote you a scripture or some great big thought that they had, said, I got it in the good book. And I'll tell you, it came out of the Holy Bible. Casting all your care upon him, that's Jesus, for he careth for you. Now I tell you, those are comforting words. And this consolation triumphs over the roughest gale just to know my Savior cares about me when I'm suffering, when I have pain in my body, when there's trouble in the home, trouble on the job, when there's financial need. When I was a death and I have heartache and so forth. He cares for me. And he's with me. He said he'd never leave me. He'd never forsake me. That was one of his last promises he ever gave to his disciples before he went back to glory. Was I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you all the way even to the end of the line. End of the world. End of the world for us. Praise God. For the end of the world for the people of God that will still be here after some of us may be dead. Praise the Lord. So we know that Jesus cares and it gives us peace beyond compare. There's another song that comes to my mind and I don't want, I want to have time to get it in here. Because the Bible says when you teach, you teach with psalms and spiritual psalms when you teach. And when you sing, you sing hymns and psalms and spiritual psalms. Well, I'm teaching. So I use the spiritual songs, and I'm going to use a whole bunch of songs. <laughs> you know why I'm going to use a lot of songs? Because I'm quoting from a man that the Bible said was a man after God's own heart. Amen. Praise God. And when you check up on a man like David and read from him or read from Job, and the Bible said we need to remember Job. <laughs> Take my brother, the prophets who have spoken unto you in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. You've heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that he's pitiful, that means he's full of pity, and of tender mercy, the end, the end. Oh, if we could just remember there's an end to everything that has a beginning except God. In the beginning, God, but in the end, God, too. There's no beginning, there's no ending without Days, without beginning of life, that's one thing you can't do with God. You can't give him a birthday. Did you know that? He don't have a birthday. That's just for us as old human earthbound beings that, that was born down here on this place. 
But God don't have birthdays. It would be impossible if God was the same as Jesus. You couldn't have a Christmas, could you? Because he would have no beginning of life or ending of days. But made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. Jesus had a birthday. He was born. He was put to death. But he arose again. That was the unique thing about him. But here, in this particular song that I was relating to here, this song is entitled, The Lifeboat. And one of those verses says, Sometimes the devil tempts me and says it's all in vain to try to live a Christian life and walk in Jesus' name. But then we hear the Master say, I'll lend you a helping hand. And if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to that land. I'll take you where you want to go if you'll trust me. If you don't trust me, you won't ever get there. Right. You know, that is the very unique truth about this warfare and life that we're living. Unless we trust Him, we'll never get there. So you've got to trust Him if you make it to where you want to go. There's no other alternative. Lord, have mercy. You just won't never make it. Amen. You must trust the Lord. And the more you trust Him, the more joyful the experience becomes. It's not all hazardous and harrowing and, and uh, shocking and debilitating and everything, even though maybe an experience now and then is. You get joy out of these roller coaster rides. Up, you down in the valley, and whoa, you ascend to a height. And you think, this is where I want to live. And by the time you get used to that thin air out there, the thing, whoa, it goes down in the valley again. Say, my Lord, it left me breathless. Praise God. All right, that's the way this old lifeboat is. Jesus said, if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to that land. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon that golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here, but we're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming. Together is Jules' home. Praise God. And I tell you, we can't stand and wait too long while she is passing by. For if you stand and wait too long, you shall forever die. The fare is paid for one and all. The captain bids you come and get on board the lifeboat. She'll carry you safely home. Praise God. But you got to trust that captain. You can't take over and have a revolution or rebellion and you take the hell. If you all do, you're going to hit the rock pile. He's the only way. And he said himself in his lifetime, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you can't get to the Father except by me. You'll never make it. So there's a reason for us trusting the Lord. It's not just blind faith. It's not something we just oh, impulsively decide to do because we're afraid of our poverty or our weakness or our lowest state. In a society where we're looked down on and frowned upon and we, we're never making to the top with the rich and the affluent. No, because we've been figures in life. No, it's because we know we can't get there unless we trust the Lord. And it must be through our faith in Him. Amen. And that means you don't see everything going on around you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right. I want to consider some other scriptures here, like I said here, about... Some authors beside Jesus and some of these that people like to rally around in the New Testament. I want us to go over to the Old Testament and that's to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms and that is to the 86th chapter. And I just happened yesterday studying the word asking the Lord to give me a, a message for today. And here's where it began in the 86th Psalm. Bow down thy ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O oh, thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee when? For I cry unto thee daily. That's one of the key words in this message today is the word daily. Now Jesus said something about that in Matthew the 6th chapter verse 11 in the Lord's Prayer. He said, give us this day our daily bread. That means you pray daily. It's a daily 
responsibility and the daily, well, it's just a result of that love and that concern and that trust we put in the Lord that we daily seek the guidance and the wonderful provision that God makes for you and I to have food and raiment and clothing and angelic security and so forth. We want all of that. We want God's help in facing the uncertain situations in our life as well as the old things that are just uh, normal and just something that we've become uh, accustomed to through long years of practice. We still need the Lord's help. We want Him to take care of us on the way to the job, on the way home. When we lay down, we want the angels to watch over us. We want God to bless us on the job and give us favor with the boss man and help us to do our very best that we can in the position of responsibility. We want God to help us with our family life, with our spiritual life, and so forth. And we pray daily. Praise God like David said here, I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. And I tell you, it, one reason that Christians fail so miserably and report many times that God don't answer their prayers or that it seems that there's no uh, way for them to ever get back to being restored, back to that joy of their salvation that you find in Psalm 51 David prayed for when he committed that great sin of his life in the matter of Uriah the Hittite and Bathsheba his wife. Restore to me the joy of my salvation which he lost. And many Christians forget that God daily has entrusted to us responsibilities and has given us only provisions for that one day at a time. As we hear that other old song I bring up to your memory, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. One day, show me the way. Help me to do my best every day. And that's exactly what God requires of you and I. As it says in Proverbs 8, chapter, verse 34, Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. You remember that verse? What does it say? Blessed is the man that what? That heareth me. Heareth me. How often? Watching daily. Watching daily at my gates. Waiting. Oh, Lord, I don't like none of your words. <laughs> God, that verse, you know what? That gives a Christian a lot of responsibility. Every day, every day. There ain't no holidays and picnics with God. You might take them, that ain't what, but you ain't going to get rewarded for that kind of life. Blessed is a man that heareth me watching daily. Blessed is a man that heareth me daily watching at my gates, waiting for me at the post of my doors. Praise God, that word blessed means that you're going to have your needs adequately provided by divine favor. You've got to seek divine favor. All oh, this old mess, well, I've just got it. David said in Psalm the 86th chapter, preserve my soul for I am holy. We've got to live a holy life. David said, I'm holy. I know a lot of people want to say, well, I thought David sinned a great sin. Well, he did. But let me show you something about that fellow David that we need to know perhaps a little bit more about him and the way God felt about the sin that he committed. If you'll turn with me to 1 Kings, the 15th chapter. 1 Kings, the 15th chapter, and we'll see about this man David that was a man after God's own heart. All right, the 18th, 1 Kings 15, the 18th year of Jeroboam reigned Abijah over Judah. Now this Abijah was the son of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, who was the son of David. Okay, he reigned in Jerusalem, and he walked in the ways and all the sins of his father. That was Rehoboam, which he had done before him, and was not perfect with God as the heart of David, his father, who was his grandfather. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord, his God, give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem for David's sake. Verse 5, now listen to this. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. One sin David 
committed. And people want to drag him down and make him a stinking reprobate or acts like he's depraved or something or another. Or he lived a backslidden life. No. He was in this condition for approximately one year. One year. Now, the prophet came to him. He responded. He fasted and he sought the Lord. And the prophet went back to him and said, God has put away your sin. This is in 2 Samuel 12. You'll not die, but your baby will die by Bathsheba. Now, the Bible said David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything God commanded him all the days of his life only and except the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now that ought to be nailed down and forgotten. Amen. Lord have mercy. Now I want us to look after this man of God that followed God after his own heart and how that he daily performed the vows that he made to God. He said, I daily perform my vows to you, Lord. And he only had one faltering moment in his life, and that was in this matter of Uriah and Bathsheba. Now, that was terrible enough, but it wasn't a lifetime thing, and it wasn't a prolonged thing. He lost the joy of his salvation, but God restored it to him because he repented. He sought the Lord diligently. And the Nathan the prophet was sent to him. He said, God has put away your sin. God is not going to let you die for this sin. Now, let's go on and see how this man lived and trusted the Lord. He got forgiveness. He knew what it was to fall victim in rebelling or not rebelling, but in lust of the flesh that led him away from God. And you go on and read about the story of this great man of God. And I want us to turn here to Psalm the 72nd Psalm. Because this is all about him. And you read it plainly. The 72nd chapter. He says, Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Listen to that. He'll judge the people with righteousness, the poor with judgment. Now this has two meanings to it. David is a forebear of Jesus Christ. And it is here a reference to Christ. It has a double meaning to it. But it also is talking about David. And David was a man after God's own heart. In verse 20, the last verse says, The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. This was from David. Now I want you to notice something here in the 72nd Psalm, beginning in verse 11. All the kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him. Now this is where it's talking about Christ. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Now notice this next verse. He shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. God wants our prayers and our praise daily. It should have seemed like an incense around us to ward off the attacks of the oppressor, the stinking demons of lust and all the oppressive devils that the stinking old Lucifer can send against us. The Bible said, Psalm 1382, God lives in the praise of his people. Lord David said, let my prayer go up before thee like incense and a lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Psalm 143. Praise God, we need to do it as many times daily as we can get our mind on the Lord to that extent. I love that verse. Prayer shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Praise God. And I'll tell you, God wants our prayer to go up continually, daily. Pray without ceasing, Jesus decreed for you and I. Pray without ceasing. Well, Paul said those words, but Jesus said men ought to pray, not to faint. Then Paul comes along and reiterates that command by the Holy Ghost and said, pray without ceasing. Now David said, prayer shall be made continually and daily shall he, that's Christ, be praised. Thank God for this daily. You want to see some more daily here from this great man? Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, 
even the God of our salvation. Daily. Blessed is the man that hears me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. And then we forget Jesus cares for us. And sometimes it seems like he doesn't because we have let something worldly come in and separate us from our prayer life and our praise life that should go up continually to the Lord. And then we wonder, well, what happened to God? You know, that to God and something happened to you. And that's why sometimes it appears that Jesus don't really care. It's because he's waiting on us to perform the vow. David said, I'll daily perform the, the vow. I'll pay my vows unto the most high. What's happening, Lord? Psalm 66. Don't to look at this. All right, beginning in verse 10. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou latest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. He cares even though we're in the fiery furnace. He's looking upon us and he even goes with us into the fire. Didn't he say that? Didn't he do that with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Daniel the third chapter. Didn't he say that in Isaiah 43 and 2? When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. Through the rivers, they might overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That sound like he cares? Then we get the old feeling, oh, the Lord, oh, may I'm wilted like a tomato plant in the hot sun and no water. Oh, they will too. Don't kid yourself. You don't give them some water. Yes, sir. It will will too. David said, I'd fainted had I not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted. You got to see the goodness of the Lord. And you'll have his goodness if you don't forget to pray and praise God continually. He cares for you. Sometimes he lets you go through a dry spell even in the presence of your praise and prayer. In spite of it, not because of it. David continues in Psalm 66, 13, said, I'll go into thy, into thy house with burnt offerings. I'll pay thee my vows which my lips have uttered and my mouth is spoken when I was in trouble. You make God's promises when you're in distress or in need. And see if you, if you don't pay that vows and see what happens to you. God will destroy the work of your hands. You won't, you won't prosper. He cares for you. But you've got to do what he tells you to do. Verse 18. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Yeah, he cares for me. Preacher, I thought you said Jesus cared for me. Look what a mess I made. Husband left me. Wife left me or something like that. Children run off from home. Lost my job. Got an affliction in my body. I'll see if I can think of anything else bad. Cars broke down. Air conditioner don't work. <laughs> Out of groceries. That does kind of sound bad, don't it? Desperate and Hopeless. But I want to tell you something. There ain't no such thing as hopeless if you'll pay your vows to the Lord. Amen. David said, I'll pay my vows. But if I regard iniquity in my heart, any form of rebellion or neglect of your responsibility to God, God won't hear me. But he says, verily, God hath heard me. <laughs> he has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Praise the Lord. He won't turn away from you when you pay your vows. He won't do it. It's impossible for God to lie. He does care for you. And the Bible said, put all your cares, your burdens on him, for he cares for you. And we need to remember that very, very consciously. We need to have it ready at all times that we can refer to that and get strength from it. Praise God and cast our cares upon Jesus for he really, really does care for us. In Psalm 112, uh, we're going to check out this book pretty carefully about this man after God's own heart. He was such a, a great example for you and I. We need to check it out. Psalm 112 verse 7 starts off, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that greatly greatly delighteth in his commandments. His seed will be mighty upon earth. 
the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. Verse 7, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings, bad news. His heart is fixed. He's trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. My God, I, Christians look at you, and they're pitiful, and you know they're not trusting in the Lord. They're grasping for every old straw they can get their hands on. That's not trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord don't make you panic when you're just praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, bad news. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he seated his desire upon the enemies. Why? He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Praise God. That'll be God will put you in a place of authority, a place where you are respected, that your integrity is recognized. Praise God, and we have all these things that God has commanded us to do, and we must do them effectively and efficiently. Psalm 118, while we're close at hand, beginning in verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now, now you might thought them were all Jews, this is going to get down to you. <laughs> Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. They fear the Lord. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and sent me in a large place. Now listen to verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? We fear the face of man. We fear relatives. We fear bosses. And we fear employees. And we fear rednecks. And we fear <laughs> terrorists. <laughs> we fear wife or husband. <laughs> In-laws and outlaws. Listen, you don't have to do that. The Lord, if you say like David... If you're daily paying your vows, daily seeking God in prayer and praise, and you're living a faithful life to God, you can say like David, verse 6 of Psalm 18, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can him enemies of mine do to me? Them old human beings. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Praise God. Then you ought to read Psalm 7, verse 17 and 18. I shall not die but live and declare the praises of the Lord, the works of the Lord. The Lord had chased me sore, but he had not given me over unto death. Praise the Lord. You ever had that experience? I have waiting on the Lord a number of times. That's when you find out where you can trust the Lord or not. you got to trust him even in the face of the grim reaper. Praise God. And I tell you, it's an experience you won't never forget and it'll qualify you for other experiences. Turn on Psalm 124. This is a great and wonderful consolation. It should be. It is to me. It was to David. And it is to me. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us, us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we're escaped. <laughs> you ever gotten the devil's trap? Set for you. He wasn't looking as carefully as he should be. Jesus said, watch and pray. He didn't say just pray, did he? Right. Sometimes we don't watch. We just pray. Go around blundering around like an old dumb boy. Got about IQ of 90. Blundering around. Like what I used to teach in counts. And bum boo be bored by a bippy 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 by a bit. And I finally kept teaching a little bit. And I got him to teach, you know, the talk a little bit better. You need to say, John do be door die, get the devil dig it down dead. That's the way Christians act. <laughs> That's 
when you get your foot in the, in the trap. Around and blundering around. Can you count? Yeah, I can count for ten. I'm going to be more by a bit of a big man then. You don't sound very smart, Christian friend. And a lot of them are. And it's not, I ain't talking about just physical. They're dumb spiritual. And I'll tell you, it's a tragedy. It gets them in more trouble and they wonder why God doesn't care. Because God expects you to have wisdom and love and a sound mind. He expects you to do like Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways. I don't care if you've got an IQ of 150 and, and you're skewed out on the steep end of intelligence. You still have to trust the Lord and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, you still have to acknowledge Him for Him to direct your paths. And if you don't trust Him, He'll let you blunder a bus off out there and get in a trap. And then you can holler and squall all you want to and blame God. It's not God's fault, it's your fault. It's so like we have a lot of people breaking up their homes, men and, men and their wives, and one wants to blame it on the other. I don't believe there's ever been one that ever was the total blame of one or the other. They could have been. They might be. I'm not saying. I don't know them all. But most of the time, it's both of them are to blame. When you get in trouble, you're to blame. God has a way out for you if you'll accept it. If it had not been the Lord was on our side, we would have been swallowed up. But God took us out of that snare mercifully. Who wants to get in a trap just to see God deliver you out of it? I don't want to get sick for God to heal me. I don't want to go through the valley of death for God to, to show his miraculous divine favor toward me. Yeah, however, I've been through it. I don't want to get broke for God to supply my need. I've been there many times. More than a hairs of my head. <laughs> I still don't like it. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. I remember a preacher one time. He had more money than I did. He handed me a hundred dollar bill. I said, Woo, brother, that's wonderful. He said, that'll make your voice stronger. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. <laughs> Boy, you broke somebody to give you a hundred dollar bill. It does make your voice stronger. Yeah. I, that night I did. I preached good in that hundred dollar bill, my father. <laughs> Them things as rare as Job's turkey's teeth. Back in the good old days. They still ain't too plentiful now, but you do see some. But boy, there's a time up to about 10 years ago, see a hundred dollar bill? You'd almost mesmerize by it. Looking at that thing on both sides and wondering <laughs> who in the world ever was fortunate enough to get one of those things. Lord have mercy. Alright, Psalm 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. See, if you trust in the Lord, you will be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. If you trust in the Lord, it's easy to tell somebody when they're trusting in the Lord and when they're panicking. Panic is not trust in the Lord. You can pray and you can praise God and you can read that Bible. There's some things you can do that will keep you from having Oh, Lord, that fear makes you push the panic button. Faith don't panic. Trust don't panic. That's when you're not trusting. That's when you're not believing. Lord, have mercy sakes in this world. If you trust the Lord, you'll be, at, be as Mount Zion. And there's some other scriptures in here about this great man of God. And, ooh, I just love this fellow to death. All right, Psalm 71. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. You're not going to be confused when you trust the Lord. It's when you take your trust out of the Lord's hands. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your steps. God is not going to direct your steps into a trap of the devil. He may lead you through a place in which he's trying your faith. He's not going to lead you in no trap of the devil. The next verse said, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't be a smart aleck and try to figure the pathway out. God said he won't direct your path unless you put your trust in him. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your navel, marrow to your bones. Praise God. 
he goes on and gives you some more direction and gets Christians in trouble. Well, most Christians, when they're in a mess, you can put your finger on this. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so your barns will be full, filled with plenty, and your presses burst out with new wine. There's your health and there's your financial needs all met there. In Proverbs, the third chapter, the first ten verses. Isn't that one? Twelve verses. You should get a Christian that's all monkeyed up, and I'll guarantee you they've mishandled, misappropriated, and fooled around with God's money. The love of money is still the root of all evil, and that word evil means adversity. Your trouble, your old griping problems, them old problems are, that are persistent that you can't shake off, has their foundation roots in your robbing God. Oh, I gave him a tithe. Yeah, but how about the time the Holy Ghost spoke to you and told you to give 50 or $100 and you didn't do that? You said, I'll do paper tithe, $20. But that little voice of spirit says, I want you to give an extra 50 or an extra 100 once in a while. And you didn't do that. That's robbing God. Now, how do you rob God? Malachi 3 and 9 says, You're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me in your tithe and offerings. Tithes and offerings. Hey, Jesus does care. You cast your care upon him. If you love him, if you live close to him, if you're faithful to him, if you keep your vows, you keep those vows to obey him. And I don't give a hoot who you are. If you got saved, you promised the Lord you would serve him and you would obey him. You ain't, you ain't saved unless you make God that, that kind of a Boy, you desperate. You get to God, you'll promise him anything to get his help. All right, listen here, Psalm 71. He said, deliver me in your righteousness, verse 2, and cause me to escape and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me. When you obey God, God's not going to let you be tempted about what you're able to bear. He's given a commandment like he did Job when he told the devil, you can put affliction on him. You can take what he's got, but don't you kill him. You see, oh, praise God. Now, Job had known that. That made that affliction a lot more easy to avoid. But he didn't know that until it was all over with. We knew the outcome of everything wouldn't be so bad. Oh, shoot, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be here two, three weeks, a month, two from now. Yeah, but you might not. Lord, don't show you the end. You just, <laughs> you see the beginning and see each plateau in that escalating trial that God's leading you into. It gets hotter in the old furnace. He pumps the bellows and everything gets hotter and worse. <laughs> oh, when are you going to quit? God don't even say a word. I can't stand it. Oh, but you can. <laughs> he said, yeah, you'll stand it. I ain't going to let you die. You'll stand it. Woo All right, listen to some more here in this 71st Psalm. Verse 17. Oh, God. Now, this is that man after God's own heart. Hey, I believe a man after God's own heart. I believe his experiences are legitimate trials that every one of us can identify with. With a trial, but also with that result of God's deliverance and escape. Okay, he said, Oh God, you've taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I'm old and gray-headed, oh God, forsake me not, until I've showed thy strength to this generation, and thy power to every one that is to come. Thy righteousness, oh God, is very high. Who has done great things? Oh God, who is like unto thee? But listen to this next. Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again. Oh God, you showed me some great and some sore troubles. Showed them to you. That doesn't mean he's always looking over the fence at somebody else. That means he's looking at me. I'm looking at me. That's where he found him at home. But said, you'll bring me up from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. And therefore I'll praise you with a psaltery. Even thy truth, O oh my God, unto thee will I sing with a harp. O oh, thou holy one of Israel. 
God. You get through, I'm going to get my instrument out and I'm going to play up and sing up a song and praise God for his deliverance. Praise the Lord. I tell you, this is beautiful. I don't know if you enjoy it or not. Just enjoy it if you don't enjoy it. Somebody will. Somebody will. Praise God. All right, Psalm 56. I memorized this, one of the first scriptures ever memorized. Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. Oh, that teacher in Bible college give us some new scriptures to memorize. When I first got there in 1948, and this is one of them. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Now he says, every day they arrest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They, they get together. They gather themselves and hide themselves and mark my steps and wait for my soul. And he goes on, though, in verse 10 again. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. Yes! <laughs> David was delivered. And the same God that delivered David is my God. And he wants to be your God that you put your trust to it into for every detail of the life that you live here on this old planet that's got a lot of trials and tribulations waiting for you. Praise the Lord. So we're going to have to do it daily. Now listen here what he said here about these particular people in Psalm. That daily. Sometimes we think we're going to get rid of everything. But Psalm 56 1 and 2. Now, you didn't notice this. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. You're going to wrestle with the devil in these problems daily. Then that's why God says you better pray and get ready to praise him daily and walk with him and live close to him. He cares for you, but you're going to have to do something for your own self. Praise God. He said, my enemies fight against me daily. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. Listen to that twice he used that word. Daily. They'd swallow me up. For there be many that fight against me. Oh, thou most high. <laughs> hey, Lord, this thing's daily. So David said, I'm going to daily seek you too. I'm going to be daily out here waiting for you at the gate. Praise God. I'm going to be right there every morning waiting on you, Lord. And you're going to sustain me. All right, Psalm 42. Psalm 42, verse 10. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Daily you're going to be tempted. Daily you're going to be tried. And daily you better pray. And praise the Lord and walk close to Him because you're going to need Him daily. You're going to have these battles daily. The devil don't go off and go to sleep and go on no vacation. He don't go to Las Vegas, even though he likes slot machines and <laughs> roulette wheels. He's not going off. He's going to come visit you and me every day. Praise the Lord. All right. What does that say again? Daily, they say unto me, where is thy God? All right, turn to chapter 13. Psalm, the 13th chapter. How long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? of me. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Hey, I've got sorrow in my heart daily. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need him every hour. There's or need him to the end. There's none like him. He is the sinner's friend. I need Jesus. Though some may walk along Though some may bear their load alone, yet I need Jesus. Praise God. How the world do you go every day? Go a day without praying and seeking God and praising Him for His benefits. 
The Bible daily said in Psalm 16, 19, remember, Blessed be the Lord God that daily loadeth me with benefits. But you've got to praise Him and seek Him daily. You're going to have these trials daily. All right? Back to chapter 13, verse 1. How long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God, like my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my might enemy say I prevail against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I move. But I have trusted in thy mercy. Praise God, that was his comfort all the day long. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. That's Psalm 119, I won't get him at that as a big one. That's the biggest chapter in the Bible. But he goes on and said, This is my comfort in my affliction. Your word is quickened me. Verse 50. This is my comfort. Well, how long, how often do you seek the word of God? You seek it daily. How often do you pray? At least daily. Sometimes several times a day. How many times a day do you praise the Lord? Psalmist David said in Psalm 119, verse 64, Seven times a day will I praise thee for thy righteous judgments. <laughs> Seven times. Amen. Well, you at least ought to praise him that many times. Oh, Lord, this is a man after God's own heart. <laughs> yeah. He prayed daily. He praised him seven times a day. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. He had sorrow in his heart daily. He was loaded with benefits daily. He stood at the gates of the Lord waiting daily. Everything he paid my, he said, I'll pay my vows daily. If you want that blessing of 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you, then you must daily seek the Lord and walk with him. Praise God. If you walk with the Lord, you have his fellowship and the strength of his wonderful presence. I'm about to forget something here. Psalm 103. Great day in this world. What a wonderful psalm. Psalm the 103rd chapter. One of the most beautiful psalms there is. They're all beautiful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Don't forget his benefits. Who daily loadeth us with benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 11, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. If you fear him, you'll seek him daily. Lord, have mercy. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Because he remembers our frame. He knows we're dust. Verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. I just held one up here while I got over the face. One of them children's children. To who? That's not the end of the, of the promise here. People like to separate these promises. Cut them and whack them. You can't whack them. you got to get your responsibility in with the promise. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Amen. Oh, we have a daily task to perform in keeping the commandments of the Lord. And it's a wonderful opportunity and a privilege when we begin to recognize the fact that God rewards us for all these things that we do for him. Psalm 77. Let me show you here something why people are discouraged in prayer. Psalm 77, verse 1. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. And you, that'll be about every day. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. And look what happened. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. Your spirit can't stand a bunch of murmuring and complaining. It will break you. It will break you down. Say, so you behold mine eyes waking. I'm so troubled I cannot speak. Verse 9. He said, is God forgot to be gracious? Hath he shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity. 
Let me tell you something. God's going to let you, let, he's going to let the oppressor oppress you and me. He's going to let you be tried. He's going to let you be tempted. He's going to let you suffer loss. He's going to let you, like David, have sorrow in your heart. He's going to let you have these things that these men of God wrote about in the scriptures to give us the understanding of these experiences that are common. As 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 13 says, There is no temptation taken you and me, but is common to man or every Christian. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear? But will with the temptation make a way for you to escape so you can bear it, not get away from it? All right, that's what he's saying here. Verse 10, Psalm 77. This is my infirmity, I said. I'm going to add a bear. This is my human affliction. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the Lord. I will remember His wonders of old. I will meditate on all thy work and talk of all thy doings. And listen to verse 13, ladies and gentlemen. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. That's what keeps people down and out. They don't get into the sanctuary where the Spirit of God is moving and the Word of God is lifting it up and increasing their faith and their strength. Amen. Amen. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as God as our God? Boy, that psalmist man after God's own heart wrote about that house of God in that sanctuary. How about Psalm 73? He said, I didn't understand what was going to happen to all these workers of iniquity out here that created the problems for us until I went into thy sanctuary. And then I considered their end. These people that make it rough on us, God has given us adversaries to cause us to have stumbling blocks. It's God's will. It's God's will for you and I to be tempted. It's God's will for you and I to suffer loss. It's good. David said, it's good for me that I've been afflicted. Can't hold it still at Psalm 119. You talk about a man after God's own heart. If you want to be a woman, a man after God's own heart, you've got to study the men and women of the Bible that were men and women after God's own heart. Not what these modern day stinking philosophers in the pulpits preach. Lord, have mercy. We've got to go to the Word of God and let it devise a path for us. I'm going to add a close here. In closing up, I want us to turn to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. We get off of that man and get on this weeping prophet here. People thought Jesus was Jeremiah in his day. Somebody, he asked his disciples, said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They say that you're Jeremiah. <laughs> Come back and get it. Why? He was a weeping prophet. He cried. All right, Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Now, you trust the arm of man, you're not going to get the same results you do when you trust the unseen arm of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 33, 27. The eternal God is their refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms to catch you. <laughs> oh, I love that scripture. Oh, that's some of the last words of Moses, a great prophet of the church in the wilderness. The eternal God, you remember, church, is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Praise God. Woo, there's somebody there to catch you. But he says here, you're cursed if you trust in man and make flesh your arm. For you'll be like the heath in the desert. You'll not see when good cometh. You'll not inhabit the parts places. You'll inhabit the parts places in the wilderness, and the salt land not inhabit it. But blessed, that means happy and bountiful, is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Bless it! <laughs> You'll have things in abundance. Praise God, your joy will be full. Great shall be the peace of thy children. God will help you. And that right early, David said. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I'll tell you, this, this thing, it just keeps getting bigger as I think about it. 
But I've got to give you this exhortation, just one verse in Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 20. I was out praying a while back. God gave me this. So forcefully, we've got to share it with you. Proverbs 16 and 20. If you want God to take your cares, you want to cast your cares on Jesus, you want Him to take those burdens from you, your burden bearer. You want Him to share your sorrows with you. You want Him to comfort you in your affliction. You want Him to be the supplier of your need. My God shall supply all of your need according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus if you put your trust in Him. You can't be trusting everything else. Now listen to this, Proverbs 16 and 20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Amen. Yeah. You ask me why I'm happy, and I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, thank God they're gone. <laughs> they're buried beneath the blood of the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. And when you handle each matter, each problem in our life wisely, we commit it to the Lord. We pray about it. And then after you pray about it, you go around praising God for it. That's just like incense. And it drives back those demons of lust and fear and rebellion and, and all those things. It causes heartache and affliction. You're driving from you when you go around with a spirit of praise. And listen, if you do that, you've got to be happy. You've got to be happy because you believe God. And it says here, whoso trusteth in the Lord, the result is, happy is he. Why are you happy? Because I'm trusting in the Lord. And if you're trusting in the Lord, no matter if somebody died in your family, your husband or wife left, your children run off, you're broke, you lost your job, Oh, pain has pressed its way into your body. The rent's due. The, the landlord's at the back door. <laughs> oh, Lord, you think all well, kind of terrible indignities it comes to a saint of God. But if you put your trust in the Lord, you're not going to find that God doesn't have a way for you to escape. God, you don't leave him with no way out. They just ain't no, no place you can get into that God don't have some way to fix up the thing and supply your need if you'll trust Him. How much are you going to trust Him? Oh, I'm going to trust Him when things go wrong. I'm going to trust Him the whole day long. He'll give you the answer. He'll make a way. So only trust Him. He's the same today. <laughs> That's a beautiful song. You're afflicted. And suffer pain, remember Jesus. He's just the same. He healed the leper and raised the dead. He's the same sweet Jesus, the Bible said. So learn to trust Him. All day long. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, help us to trust Jesus. For Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but for me. And Lord, it's a hopeless thing. Unless we put our trust in Him. If we don't trust Him, we don't know the way. One of His disciples said, Lord, we don't know whether you go. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. And unless you trust me, you can't get to the Father. Lord, we trust you. It's not blind faith. We've got a book here, a guidepost, a road map to heaven. And Lord, we put our trust in the words of this blessed book. We're not going to turn to the right hand. We're not going to turn to the left. We're not going to let the devil attract our attention and get it on some other way. Praise God. There is only one way. We're going to walk that straight and narrow way. With you. Some through the waters, some through the floods, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Praise God. You lead your dear children along. Help these to trust you that's listening. Help them to teach it to others. Help them to stand up and be an example, a sterling example of those that have put their trust in Jesus. Help them to be faithful to you, to be obedient to you. And Lord, you can load them daily with your benefits. That means money, it means health, it means their home, 
and the restoration of their home and other things that are so vital, so important to make us a happy person. As old David said in the last verse of Psalm 144, he said, Yea, happy is the people that's in such a case. Yea, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Praise God. They're happy people. And you are our God. We're not just talking it with our lips. You are our God and we put our trust in you. And we're going to handle every matter wisely according to the word of God. And you said if we put our trust in the Lord, we'll be happy because of it. I believe that with all of my heart. I recommend this trust in Jesus. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just in simple faith to trust him. Just to know the saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go with everyone here. Bless those in the video audience and their families. May your hand rest upon us, dear Lord, and help us not to forget your benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth our iniquities? Who healeth us of all of our diseases? Who crowneth our life with loving kindness and redeemeth us from destruction? Lord, that's your will, that's your promise, and we have committed ourselves to you in simple trust for these blessings and benefits. In Jesus' name.